No, I would imagine you played in a somewhat controlled offense most of your career, but are these individual moves important? Well, I have played uh, basically from a set offense in uh, high school, college, and in the pros. I think that playing one-on-one uh, -on -one is very important because you're not going to be able to score or help your team if you can't. You know, when you do them, they look, well, they look natural, and I'm wondering if they can be learned, if they can be taught. Well, I've learned uh, basically all the moves that I use. They, they were taught to me early in my career, but I still have to work on them, and if a player is willing to work, then he can learn the moves. Well, let's see how they're taught. If a defensive man has one foot forward, he has a strong side and a weak side. Here, Lou Hudson attacks the strong side and is stopped. Notice the defensive man's left foot. That's his weak side because it's extended toward Hudson. You always attack that weak side. Watch how it's done. If the offensive man makes his move to his right, the defense can adjust and cover him. If he takes a step toward the defensive man and that step is too short, again, the defense will adjust. But if you take a long, quick step and place your foot right next to your defensive man's foot, you'll beat him. Let's look at it again. The move wide to the right accomplishes nothing. The short step toward the basket gives the defense room to cover. But a quick move that locks in the left foot of the defense will result in baskets. This action is slowed for illustration purposes, so let's look at how it really works in competition. Lou Hudson has the ball, and you'll notice the defensive man's right foot. It's close to Hudson. The defensive man's weak side is usually the side where he has his foot up, and that's the side you want to attack. You may say to yourself, well, that's Lou Hudson, a great player. I could never do that. Well, you're wrong. You can do it. The secret is looking for the defensive man's weak side and attacking him there. In these illustrations, Hudson's left foot is used as his pivot foot. So he uses the onside step to beat the defensive man on the weak side. Don't forget, you must be able to dribble right or left, or the defense has a tremendous advantage. You're not going to beat a defensive man every time, even if you have good moves. But watch him and make a mental note of what he's doing, and then take advantage of it the next time. If your other foot is your pivot foot, then you must use the crossover step. Fake to your left, and when the defense moves that way, lift your left foot and cross it over and put it beside the defensive man's left foot, and once again you've beaten him. Is it difficult? Watch Lou Hudson in competition. He actually makes the move against the man's strong side. See him cross over? Protecting the ball as he makes the move. He drives close to the defensive man and into the basket for two points. Now let's look at it again. If you move to your left, the defensive man can easily adjust to cover you. If you go wide to your right, again the defense can adjust. On the short step also, you'll find it difficult to beat your man. But if you'll have the courage to attack that lead foot and go right at your defensive man, you'll lock in his foot and go past him. You'll never develop good individual moves unless you have the courage to attack the defense. Always go to his weak side after a fake to the strong side, and you'll be richly rewarded with baskets. Watch my feet, and when I'm attacking a man, I try to get my feet as close as possible to his front foot. Of course, when a defensive man plays with his feet even, as you see here, you have a different problem. But Lou Hudson handles it and scores anyway. He merely fakes to his left, causing the defensive man to move his right foot back. Now Hudson attacks the weak side and drives right for the jump shot. How did he do it? Well, you may recognize the move. Hudson faked in one direction and used the crossover step. To be an effective individual offensive player, you must know how your defensive man plays. Don't just get the ball and take off blindly. Look first. Observe him each time down the court. Let's look at it. The defensive man has his feet even. Hudson fakes left, and naturally the defense drops his foot back, and he now has a weak side. Hudson uses the crossover step and beats the defense. Often, defensive men will overplay to one side or the other. 
Fake to the side, he overplays, and use the crossover step to beat him. The jump shot is probably your most effective weapon against this defense. Many times you can drive to the basket, but the jump shot will work on each of the moves we'll show you. Remember, these are demonstrations. Your defensive man won't be so cooperative. That's why you must learn these moves and others to be effective. One-on-one -on -one moves are very necessary because you're not going to score all of your points out of the team pattern. When playing individual offense, it doesn't mean that you should hold on to the ball or hog the ball. It means beating your man and the possible passing off to another teammate who can also score. In this sequence, the defense is playing to stop Hudson. You'll notice these moves are effective, but you must be able to go both ways. Make your fakes convincing because you want the defensive man to think that you're going to do one thing, then do something else. We've seen how to attack a defense that plays tight, but these moves won't work when your man is four to five feet back. So now we must talk about the dribble. There is one fundamental principle you must learn. Develop the courage to dribble directly at your defensive man and then make your move to beat him. When you dribble to either side, you cut your effectiveness by 50%. Watch Pete Maravich. Can you make this move? Yes, you can. It's easy. The shot is something else, but the move is easy. Using the same principle of attacking the weak side of the defense, New Hudson dribbles straight at his man, fakes with his left foot and left hip, and drives for the score. Now let's watch for the key points. As Hudson fakes with his left side, he keeps the ball near his right hip. Don't move the ball to the left, move your body. As the defense leans to the fake, Hudson has the ball ready. If a defensive man overplays you, then that means that he's usually smart and quick, so you've got to work a little bit harder to beat him, but don't be afraid to attack him. Let's look at it slowly. Hudson goes straight at the defense, he fakes to the left, planting that left foot. Notice the ball is still on the right side. Hudson plants his right foot next to his opponent's left foot. Now he merely pushes the ball forward and drives to the basket. This is not a difficult move, but you must go straight at the defense or it's not effective. Defensive men usually play defense with their feet, attack his feet, and use your feet when you're playing offense. A lot of times when you beat your man, you can't go all the way but don't be afraid to pull up and shoot the jump shot. If you're going to be a good offensive player, then be able to dribble with both hands, and that means being able to dribble with your left hand as well as your right. Don't expect to learn these moves right away. They take time and hard work. You may ask, what if the fake doesn't move the defensive man? Well, if that's the case, you do as Pete Maravich does. You use the crossover dribble. Push the ball from the right hand to the left hand and attack the defense on his weak side. It's an easy move. Once again, the shot's another matter. You must cross the ball in front of the defense, but with practice, it's not difficult. Watch the key points. Fake to the right. Bounce the ball directly under the defensive man's extended hand, not too far so you can pick it up with your left hand, and drive close to the defense to the basket. Here's Pistol Pete again. The move is not difficult, but the secret lies in Maravich's ability to handle the ball, and that takes practice. When you're bouncing the ball right in front of the defensive man, make sure that you have control of the ball and don't let it get too far out in front of you. Once again, use the jump shot as well as the layup, and the defense has a lot of problems. A smart defensive man can cause you problems by overplaying your strong side. Here's an answer to that, the reverse pivot dribble. It takes practice, but without it, your defensive man can have the advantage. Again, Pete Maravich demonstrates how effective it can be. The defense overplays to Pete's left. With the ball on his left side, Pete spins his body away from the defense, picks the ball up with his right hand and drives. Once again, with practice, the move is relatively simple. The shot is impossible. This move illustrates another point. 
If you can learn these techniques, your defensive man is going to commit fouls. You'll score better because of the free throws. There's two ways to make the move. Pull the ball around with your right hand or change hands and pick it up with your left hand. Let's look for the key points. When you make your last fake, have your left foot out in front and leave the ball back by your right hip. That's the secret. Now when you turn, the ball is right there. Your right leg drops toward the basket, pinning the defense behind you. When you drive to the left, just reverse the procedure. Right foot forward, spin and pick up the ball with the right hand, drive and score. Here's a classic move by Pistol Pete. You must develop moves on your own and you'll see Maravich do a double reverse pivot dribble. First he reverses, then reverses again, and the defense wonders what happened. Pete scored. If you're going to perfect your individual moves, you must learn to drive as close to the defense as possible. If you're afraid to drive straight for the basket, you'll find the defense can recover and stop your shots. Use chairs to make sure you don't go wide to allow the defense to recover. If you're afraid of contact, you'll never be a great scorer. You don't need a Pete Maravich or a Lou Hudson to teach you these moves. You just need the determination to practice by yourself in the gym, on the playground, or in your backyard. Set up obstacles and make your moves as if you were playing against a Maravich or a Hudson. Those players worked hard to become pro stars. Will you work that hard? Well, Lou, we've seen how it's done, but I guess there's more to it than just the fundamentals. Well, you're right, Ed. It's uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication. How much work do you put in? Well, now I uh, don't practice that much because we play just about every day, but when I was younger, I spent quite a bit of time playing, especially during the summer when I could uh, work on the things that I didn't do right during the year. How much time? Oh, I'd say a couple hours a day anyway, but we played uh, games most of the time. I was sort of the athlete that went out and uh, I wanted to be the best ball player in the area, so I put in more time than anybody else. Now, you say two or three hours. Really that long? Oh, at least that long. During the summer, it was longer than that because uh, you're out on the playground. A lot of times I go out early in the morning and uh, spend time out there shooting around, working on things that I was weak in. How do you practice, though? Well, I try to uh, remember what the coaches were telling me when I was uh, doing something wrong when they watched me. And I uh, try to practice the fundamental in the right way. The right way. That's the only way to do it. <laughs>